I need to open it up. Release the Quacken! They didn't really want to get out today. <laughs> I did get two eggs though, unfrozen. So it's been like 40 plus degrees for the last two days. Um, so much of the snow has been melting, but now it's dropped back down. I think it's about 10 degrees right now. And so uh, I just think the ducks aren't used to the cold. Since I know that that was a very disappointing release of the Quacken, uh, I'm gonna let a friend of mine do it for me. The quackens are free. The are free. Woo Thanks for the help, Gabe. That was awesome. Uh, I got that video in the email yesterday from uh, Jennifer over at the Haywire Homestead, and uh, I don't know, seeing that just made my day. I'm probably way more excited about that than I should be, but I just thought it was awesome, so I wanted to share it with you. And uh, be sure to go check out Jennifer's channel, Haywire Homestead. They do a lot of cool stuff out there. So I wanted to tell you guys today a story of something that happened to Allison and me uh, a few years back, uh, it's, it's actually a while ago, it's probably about nine years or so. Uh, Allison and I at the time, we were just dating, we hadn't even gotten engaged at that point. And uh, we had decided to go on this trip to South Africa. It's a very long roundabout story about how we even got the trip to South Africa, but I'll just leave it as we had this awesome trip to South Africa. We spent one week of the trip in like the the eastern cape and doing safari type stuff and hanging out and looking at animals and taking lots of pictures and then for the second week we decided to go to cape town and spend the week in and around cape town so this thing happened to us while we were just arriving in Cape Town. So, so we had spent the day trying to fly from Richards Bay to Cape Town and we spent most of the day in this like, little tiny commuter airport eating gross microwave grilled cheese sandwiches and you know our flights kept getting canceled or we kept getting bumped off of flights and finally around like 9.30 at night we had gotten on a plane and we had just landed in Cape Town. So at that point, our tolerance for life and everything around it was was kind of low and we were very miserable and cranky. Much more miserable and cranky than two uh, somewhat well-to-do Americans should be in a, at a place that often struggles like South Africa. When we get to Cape Town, uh, the plan had been that we were gonna rent a car and use it to drive around. We were gonna go see vineyards, we were gonna go to the Cape of Good Hope, we were gonna drive around and see penguins. We were we had like all these crazy touristy visions in our mind and so we had to get this rental car. Being in South Africa at that time, that was the first time I was ever going to have the opportunity to drive on the uh, left hand side of the road. So uh, much like the rest of the Eastern Hemisphere, um, in, in uh, South Africa they drive on to us Americans, the wrong side of the road. And so I was like, fine, I, I'm, I'm always considered myself a pretty darn good driver. And so I didn't think it would be a big deal, but we rented this car and, and I gotta say, driving on the wrong side of the road was a little bit of a mind trip, right? Like uh, you're just not used to it. Like I kept kind of wanting to veer and turn and not really looking when I was making a right turn and looking way too much when I was doing a left turn. And I was doing dumb stuff. Like when I want to turn it on my turn signal, I turn on my wiper blades. And on top of it all, this was a car that had a, a manual transition. So I was like trying to get used to shifting with my left hand, which was this totally weird experience. And at the same time, the clutch was where a clutch would normally be. It just, it was very weird. I was very uncomfortable driving, but look, I was gonna get used to it. It was gonna be fine. We pick up the car at the rental car place. We're driving on the road, heading towards our hotel. We're driving on the highway in South Africa. And all of a sudden, boom, all I can see is gray and Allison freaks out and says, oh my gosh, what the hell did you do? I, I look and it turns out that the hood of the car had flipped up 
Like it was just, you know, we were driving, 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 and it flipped up. I couldn't see anything in front of us. It was just completely blocked out. And I remember that the first thought that crossed into my mind was, oh, this is totally cool. This happens in Grand Theft Auto all the time. I'll be fine. And so I was actually able to keep my cool, pull off to the side of the highway, um, and, and stop the car, park the car safely, and like take a big sigh of relief because man that was a stressful moment allison's a little bit panicked but she calms down too we're okay the car's okay things are fine we're just on the side of the road with our hood up i get out of the car and i inspect the hood and look, inspect the car it doesn't look like there's any damage and so i just go to close the hood and as i pull the hood down the entire hood just snaps right off. And I'm like, oh no. And now this rental car, let me just say too, this is like one of those tiny little uh, like Hyundai type rental cars. It's like the type of car that is predominant in Europe and Asia and uh, Africa, yet you don't see any of them around here in America because nobody would drive them because Americans like big stuff. There we are standing on the side of the road. The hood of the car now is on the ground. We have no hood, but the car's still running, and so I'm contemplating just picking up the hood and trying to get it into the rental car. Now again, because it's a tiny rental car and because we've got luggage and stuff, I'm struggling in vain trying to get the uh, hood of the car into the back, like hatchback part of this little mini car. This gets more and more ridiculous, so stick with me here. So as I'm getting the hood back in the car, um, you know, I notice that to the side of the highway, like, you know, there's like a, a fence, a little bit more substantial than one of our duck fences, but a fence that's just there. And then all behind me is this like shanty town. And what I learned after I did a little bit of research was that this was a township, which was a type of community that was started up in South Africa during the times of apartheid. Um, they were, you know, these little tiny shanty towns that had really high crime and, you know, in apartheid, you know, the, the whites would push all the black people there and that was like how they, they pushed apartheid was creating these townships. So we were right outside this township of Guguletu and, you know, people are starting to look at us. And now this is where my paranoia, judgment of the world kind of instincts kick in. And I start to think about the, the news stories I would read in the newspaper about people getting carjacked in Durban and, and people getting held hostage in Johannesburg. And I think to everybody who we said when we said we were going to go to South Africa, they're like, oh, wow, South Africa. There's a lot of crime there, isn't there? So my mind just starts to like feed on this fear of the awfulness of South Africa and the danger of South Africa and the risks and oh no, we're gonna get mugged and murdered and raped and then mugged again and, and all this bad stuff's gonna happen. My mind goes to this horrible place and it's all just judgment just because I'm seeing this you know poor little community off to the side of the road and here I am a guy with a rented car on an expensive vacation who can't seem to get his hood into the trunk of his car. So while my mind is going a million miles an hour around this and I am like struggling with the what to do and trying to figure something out, this beat up old car, it looks like it has like a juicy juice can for a muffler and it's more rust than metal in terms of its body construction, pulls up right behind us. And I'm like, oh crud, this is it. This is the guy who's gonna come kill us. And so I've got my guard up, I'm like ready to go. I actually have the, the hood of the car in my hand and I'm like ready to, to like smack anybody who comes at me. And this little man gets out of the car and he was kind of quirky looking. He had um, like this dirty checkered shirt. His hair was all disheveled. He was like in his 40s. He had these giant sort of you know, like Kurt Rambis in his prime glasses that he was wearing, just completely bug-eyed and bobble-headed. And, and I was just like, oh boy. And like what he lacks in physical intimidation, he makes up for in his kind of crazy guy energy. And he says, what are you doing? This is very dangerous. You're taking your life in your hands and throwing it away. Come with me, come with me. And I'm just like, dude, I'm not going anywhere with you. I don't even know who you are. My name is Jonathan. And I am a born again Christian and a good Samaritan, and I have been sent here to help you. <laughs> and now hearing this, I'm like, okay, man, my alarm bells are totally going off on you, guy. And now like any good confidence man, this guy kind of reaches into his shirt pocket and pulls out this crumpled, dirty business card that says his name is Jonathan and he's a real estate agent of some sort or whatever. But like, you know, this totally feels like 
any con man I would meet in the streets of a city of America. So, so I just tell the guy, hang on buddy, I gotta get my hood in the car and then I gotta keep going to my hotel. Here, here, let me help you. Let me grab your bonnet. And I later learned that in South Africa and a lot of Europe, they don't call hoods of cars hoods, they call them bonnets. Oh yeah, I'll with you. That's right. This didn't seem like a very good idea to me because of this guy's vibe and energy. He felt like this flim flammy huckster type. I felt like I was walking right into a scam. But at the same time, I didn't feel like I had any choice. So the guy takes the hood, shoves it in his car. What, 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 what's your hotel? Tell me which hotel you're staying at. Now I have this friend and he works in the hospitality industry. And, and at the time, he had a lot of connections in South Africa. And so when he knew I was going on this trip to Cape Town, he was like, dude, I've got the best hotel in the world for you. I'll set you up. I'll get you this crazy cheap rate. You got to stay there. It's like this five star amazing place. You got to go. So our plan was to be going to this wicked fancy hotel. So I tell Jonathan the name of this hotel. I know, poor judgment, right? And he jumps into his car and drives off and Allison and I just start following him. This is some really poor judgment you're seeing. So if you're a kid, like Gabe, if you're at home watching this, don't do this if you get in this situation. We drive off and we're driving around, driving for about 15 minutes, winding around through Cape Town. Everywhere though he's taking us sort of jives with the directions that our GPS is telling us to go on. So I'm feeling like, okay, if he goes in a sketchy direction, we might just continue on to the hotel. I mean, this is a rental car. I have full coverage. I really shouldn't care about this, this uh, hood of a car. We get about 10 minutes from the GPS and the the guy pulls over and, and he says to me, we're almost at our hotel and I need money for petrol. Could you please spare some Rand? Rand is the currency in South Africa. So this was the moment I had been waiting for, this guy to try to con me. And, and so I say, all right, whatever. And so I reach into my pocket and I pull out 200 Rand and give it to him. And he's like, petrol actually costs about 300 Rand. And so I just sort of shake my head and give him another 100 Rand. And so I give the guy 300 Rand. And again, 300 Rand's like 40 bucks. So it's not this crazy amount of money, but I knew this was gonna happen at some point, but I just kind of went with it. And I say, please, just be, just if you can, bring the car hood back to my hotel. Thank you. Jonathan thanked me and said he would see me in a couple minutes. And I was fully expecting never to see the hood of the car again. And so Allison and I just sort of continued on to the hotel. So we drive about another mile or so and we get to the hotel. And this place is ugh, glorious. I mean, just this big fountain out front, security like lining the perimeter gates of the hotel. There's like a doorman with a top hat and tail and it's so fancy and and here Allison and I are pulling up at the front of this hotel in our hooded sweatshirts in our hoodless car and you know they're looking at us like uh oh what's going on here and we stop we park the car and get out and the valet is like do you have a reservation here sir and I say yes and I tell him our name and he looks at a list that he has and he says oh okay come right this way and so this valet is wearing a tuxedo so, so the doorman and the valet are looking at us like what the heck is going on these people are driving around in this little tiny crappy car without a hood something's up here whatever but they end up taking us in and we check in and Allison and I go up to our room we like have a celebratory glass of champagne to just sort of relax and take the edge off. It's been a crazy day. And uh, I contact the rental car company and they say that they're gonna send somebody over in about an hour. And so we just sort of hang out. So about an hour or so later, I get a text on the uh, borrowed cell phone that I have. And it's saying that the, the rental car people are downstairs. I go down to meet them. I fill out some paperwork and they say everything's covered. It's all fine. They have brought another car that's identical to the same little tiny crappy car I had before, but this car has a hood. You know, we're wrapping up and they're getting ready to go. And the rental car guy goes, but wait a minute, sir, we need the hood of the car. Where is the hood of the car? So as he says this, this moment of panic sets in but it is immediately released because out of the corner of my eye, I see Jonathan in his little crappy car pull up. He pops out of the car. He's waving the hood saying, my friend, my friend, I have your bonnet. <laughs> and it just sort of blew me away. It was like the end of a, an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm or something. <laughs> it was incredible. All right, let's go feed the barn cats and see what's inside that package. Hang on, barn cats, just relax, just relax, just relax. Oh, 
Look at that. Check that out, huh? Wow. This is awesome. So this is this is a nice home knit hat from uh, my friend Jay out in Missouri at the Grateful Sunites. Uh, she and her husband Kurt they have this cool little homestead and channel, and uh, they they do some cool stuff with uh, peafowl and a few other things. I've got a really adorable puppy right now, um, and so she knit this hat for me and and sent me some awesome little soap samples. I'll leave a link down below to both their channel and if you want to get a cool looking hat like this, um, then you can probably order one from Jay. I know she does just an awesome job knitting it. I mean, the construction of this thing is pretty awesome. It feels great, nice little wool hat. I can't wait to just wander around with this. this is, look, it even matches my sweatshirt. This is cool.